sister is asking about a narration. It's not a hadith, maybe it's a narration uh, from Bulugh al Maram number 28. And this is also mentioned in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, where Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, وسلم, narrated and said that she used to scrape off the semen from the garment of the Prophet. Then he would offer prayer with that piece of. Now, why did the ulama mention this hadith and narrate it? Because there's a benefit to it. We understand from the hadith that semen is by itself, the liquid is not impure. It is tahir. Semen, sperm, sorry, is uh, tahir. It is a pure liquid. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ would offer prayer with that garment and he wouldn't wash it, you know. It's Aisha that would just rub it off or scrape it off and he would still offer prayer with it. He doesn't, you know, apply water. And as we know, anything that is najis, that is impure, you have to wash it. I'm sorry, I'm going to get a little technical here, but don't get confused with the, the ejaculation. That makes you in a state of impurity. You become impure. You need ghusl. Yeah, you need ghusl. You need to shower if, if semen leaves your body, exits your private part. But the liquid itself is not impure. If it touches your clothes or touches, you know, your body and it's that doesn't make that doesn't make your clothes impure do you get it now last but not least pre-ejaculation is not like semen pre-ejaculation is impure yeah the transparent liquid that is impure that is nudges so if that leaves your body doesn't make you in a state of impurity but that is impure so if it if pre-ejaculation touches your body touches your clothes then you have to wash it. That's najis. Wallahu